Yeah. Well, it's cleanup day. We're fixing uh, broken water pipes and cleaning out the water. And Chris Fellows is back. That's Liam. You're going to see him later on. He does some pretty amazing stuff. And, and you know this one, Brandon, is back in here. Aloha. Yeah, no, we're not going to use the ground. Oh, I, I, I think you glue it back together. It looks fine. Yeah, right. just a little duct tape on there. That's it. Resin. Yeah, epoxy it. That'll work. Well, so what you do is duct you epoxy tape. it, duct then tape. you duct tape it, and then for added strength, zip ties. Yeah. There you go. There you That'll go. work. <laughs> this one? Yes. Oh, yes. Do your job. Oh, it's going to overflow. Whoa. Well, it didn't matter really, does it? So which one is the other one? This one? No. This one? No. This one? Where's my little piece of paper? It's called trial and error. Here. Oh, don't, you drop, got my don't drop it in the water, please. Oh, really? Third and fifth. Is that one running? I don't see it moving at all. Maybe ice is the problem. Ice, dead ahead, sir! All right, there's a pump in here somewhere. Hey, that's cold ice. Oh, man, it's frozen up. Oh, man. Okay, we're going to have to wait for that pump to thaw, I think. Did it just kick on? No, that's a pump running. She's taking water on, Captain. Oh. Yeah, just, just keep your hand on it for another 30 minutes. We'll be fine. Why not? That looks repaired to me. Well done. Yeah, the oil sight glass has to be remounted for our new location. Damn it, that's fucking heavy. I need to close that portal. Oh. Christ, I got a hernia. You want to see it? No. <laughs> oh. These are labeled on the other end, right? Thing to do. Blood injury for the boat. Yeah, good for you. Okay, his first aluminum MIG project, and that is a fine looking weld. Needs a little bit hit here at the end, but other than that, no big deal. And grinder fixes the rest. So there's no excuse. Buy a welder, get out there, get going. You'll love the things you can make. these things have to be changed at every 15 hours or so. So a bracket for the tank, bracket for the oil drain, we'll have to tidy up our hoses here, and then a bracket up here for the solenoid valves that, uh, well they bleed off the water and oil mixture that collects and condenses inside. You can also manually drain it, and we relocated the oil fill site glass. We've got to put some marks on it still to show where the oil level is supposed to be in here. There you go. Picked out a gray stain. I've never used a gray stain before, but I think it's gonna be a nice blend from the gray floors to the red ceiling. Well, the first coat went on yesterday, and now we're uh, knocking that down with 220 grit. And it's not anything fancy, Marine. It's just Home Depot polyurethane, but it is oil-based. You know, I've tried some stuff that's water-based, and it just oh, give me the oil-based. This is Oklahoma. Drill, baby, drill. Yep, today's the day we put the antifreeze in the boat. Right there, that'll do. So the planet's just siphon it out. Okay, yeah, say what you like. Oh, I can't believe I can't bring all up. I suck bad. Need my ex-wife here. All right, it did start, so I am better than I thought. Okay. I'm gonna cut it in half. Hadn't come off the front yet, meaning the ground is rebounding in the front. 
not successful jacking it up because put 30 tons on it and the ground sinks rather than the boat going up so we'll need more steel underneath this okay plan b is we're going to build a lifting point here kind of like that one there it's kind of like a taco and it will go here because it's far enough back that we can jack it up and the truck can back underneath the hitch and we got to get that front end a lot lower and we got to be able to lower it onto the truck when the truck gets here just slap it on heavy and thick next day all right yeah that's definitely empty so that happened overnight and we got the bottom of the cabinets painted this is just an oil based paint and we wanted to seal this up really good these were already painted once but what the idea is keep water from damaging these cabinets because this is a wet deck up here we'll get water across it every once in a while so the exterior of our cabinets gets the grain we'll need to sand that varnish and put another coat of varnish on there and then the inside of our cabinets is all going to get more of this gray paint and i have an idea about how to jack this boat up because we're going to need to do this multiple times unfortunately you know it's got to go up and then back down to go onto a truck and then the first move we'll probably just pull it out there onto the street make sure we can get across this ground when it's dry leave it over there on the other side of the street for a little while then we'll need to jack it up put it back on the truck again back it down the street take it all the way to the port on august 12th then we'll need to unleash the truck there again so up again and back down and then we'll need to move it underneath the crane for final movement and we may need to move it again even between then so i have hydraulic cylinders they're for the rudder but they're big enough then we've got this little portable pump that we've been testing our crane with and that does easily 2000 psi and these are the rams that work the rudder so they're not doing anything and they lift at 2000 psi nine tons each so if we just put two of them together we got plenty of force going up this is just a drill bit box but this is kind of what i'm thinking about here if we just put you know did it like this with the outside box coming down over the inside one now if i needed to you know i could put that taco up here and even attach struts to it we really don't got to take a lot of force sideways or anything like that there's no reason why it wants to do that but the box will keep those cylinders you know aligned as long as they have oh like a, a f maybe 16 inches of overlap here i think that'll be fine well yeah i mean i think it'll work but i'm going to make a short video put it up on facebook and see if some of the guys there have a better idea or refinement of this one you know there's always that oh you need to buy one no no we don't need to buy anything we got some scrap steel we've got the hydraulic cylinders that you need to go buy one i hate that answer that's not even an answer that's a cop out don't give that answer and siphon off the last of it down into the skeg there yeah, diesel gasoline okay antifreeze ah. okay so our extended life antifreeze is in the boat now we're going to dilute it down with reverse osmosis water our water is about 190 parts per million here so this thing will clean it up significantly better than that should get it down into the tens and uh so at a one-time use thing it's cheaper to buy this and produce uh the other 55 gallons of water than it is to buy the 55 gallons of water so We'll run this, see how it was. We'll take it onto the boat too, because you know, you never know. Somebody gets picky. I drink out of river, so it, this doesn't mean anything to me. But there are those people who grew up under their mama's skirts and they need cleaner water. So we'll to show them this thing. Actually, the good reason we're having one of these on board is to clean up water for a researcher. They may need cleaner water than what our RO will produce. And this thing will get it on down. These don't clean salt water. You cannot make fresh water from salt water with one of these gadgets. This operates about 40 to 60 PSI. The real thing for salt water operates at 800 PSI. Uh, this needs the water to be 180 parts per million as to clean already for this thing to work reliably. Uh, salt water is like 34,000 parts per million so don't think you can get one of these and make uh, fresh water out of salt water that's not even the same category apples and oranges okay but we can clean our water up and uh, put cleaner water in with our coolant system not that that even matters a whole lot because the whole inside of that skeg is is uh, steel on the inside so there's gonna be a lot of contaminants in there already but eh it's not that much money so we'll do it and i haven't played with it before our, so our, our water pressure is okay but it's we're a lot colder right now than what this thing likes and the flow rate wow it's only a half gallon per minute 
Now it is a cross flow membrane, just like the membranes we use in the boat. And meaning that there in the end, you can see that spiral wound material there, that is the membrane. So water goes in there and what passes between the sheets that's wrapped up comes out the end here. So you flow a half gallon a minute through the thing but you get uh, a whole lot less water out. You gotta flow three and a half gallons just to make one gallon of water. So this is gonna take a long while. And once you've uh, got 400 gallons of water out of it under optimal conditions, you gotta change the cartridges in it then too. So these are expensive things to run. And the cartridges, there's a sediment cartridge that goes through first, then it goes to the carbon uh, filter, and then it goes through the membrane after that. And the water that's really clean passes through the membrane everything else just gets rejected so you've got two streams coming out so it's a lot slower than the one in the boat the one in the boat makes uh oh, 65 to 80 gallons of water an hour so we make 55 gallons of clean water and then we dump that in there we should be fine that should be like five gallons more than we need systems flushed so the filter is in wastewater product water yeah, yeah. 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 Mm. Yeah. Now that's the good stuff, the wastewater. It has flavor to it. Okay, to make a gallon of water, we need three and a half gallons of water, and we only flow half a gallon per minute, so we flow, uh, take seven minutes then to make uh, one gallon of water. We need uh, 55 gallons of water, and in hours, that's six and a half hours more. This is Christian, all the way down from Kentucky, and a welder. So we're open house today and we've got a lot of people coming through and I'm going to try and figure out what all they, what's their motivation for watching Seeker. And apparently we came up, you were watching a, a video on welding and it started off that way? Yeah, pretty much. Yeah. So you're yeah. still in school, you're in high school. High school, senior year, last year. And they're teaching you to weld in a public high school? Yeah. Well, yeah, I go to a trade school. Oh, it's yeah. a trade school. Yeah, I go to a trade school. So uh, Horse Cave? Horse Cave, Kentucky, yeah. So <laughs> the funny thing about it is I, I work That's at a the cool cave. Name. Oh, you do yeah, work in the cave? Yeah, I, I do work at the cave, yeah. It's actually so a So it's actually name. a cave that you yeah, can... Yeah, oh, it's a cave a... right in the middle. It's in... Our town is built on top of a cave. Uh, I started watching a couple of different uh, videos, well, sailing videos, and I saw yours. And, Are you going to sail? Um, I've already got a boat. Uh, you so. live in Jacksonville, Florida. Of course you have a boat. What yeah. kind of boat you have? It's a uh, Alvin trawler. It's a 1980 uh, fiberglass trawler boat. It, did, it doesn't have any sails on it. No, it does not. What's my the matter son, with you? My son has a sailboat, though, so that's close enough. <laughs> Vicariously, yeah. I'm sailing. You like to get home when you want to get home. Well, I can just okay. crank the diesel. And yeah, go, you so. just go. Yeah, <laughs> it is an advantage. Yes. So. No, it's a lot of fun. So, are you thinking about building a boat? Uh, I'm good with the maintaining and the uh, maintenance and hey, upgrading a boat. I, I have a boat. I can, <laughs> yeah, I can yeah, use just call me, and, yeah. and you have problems. I'll come work. out and help solve. You betcha. You betcha. You betcha. So long ago, I don't remember when it was. Yeah, me neither. You you coming up on ten years. Ten years. Yeah, he's watched you a lot. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. There's a lot of videos out there that's a lot of wasted time I know what is it no you? not for him yeah this is Gil you asked about 3d printers Gil does 3d printers <laughs> okay they asked, got, at, got asked on the live thing if we're gonna have a 3d printer on the boat oh, okay I, I'm just you know once you do metal it's like oh, do I really want it out of 3d PLA uh, you know they're getting better right right it was like you were talking about China China gives all these options you know but even quicker than China if you need something you know, just a bracket off your, your refrigerator hinge or something like that. I actually repaired my, my toilet once. It was in the yeah, bind. Yeah, I know. I, I know. They come in. Here. I'm going to have one on the boat because <laughs> my CNC machine, I have it a, a head that we can put 3D printing on it. It's, right. just, it's just so rare that I actually find a good use for it, though. Yeah. So, I, mean, I do have some 3D printed parts in my ROV. So I think when I start getting more finesse -y work. Right. But, you know, when you're building a, a hull out of quarter inch steel, people ask you about 3D printers. It's like, yeah. why? <laughs> Correct. Or you yeah. can make a holder for your your welding torch. Yeah, uh, I can bend a piece of wire to it. It works fine. <laughs> but I mean, if you're gonna maybe do like some lost PLA for some casting, maybe uh, it's a you know bit what? I I hate that idea. But the one I do like is where the the mold gets printed. Right. You know that that powder uh, infusion stuff. Oh yeah, yeah. The the sintered metal. Uh, that's, that's no, actually, not yeah. not that. Oh, no. That that's 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 okay too. But that's insanely expensive. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's gonna, but I, you know, I'm more for it. Because the more you guys do it, the cheaper it gets and the better it gets. Correct. But no, this one was, it printed the mold. So it printed the actual uh, uh, ceramic shell. Oh, okay. And then you pour the metal into the shell. 
nice. That was that's cool. You that's know, I, I looked at that pretty hard, but it's like this just didn't live on a boat well, you know. So. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah. So. All right. Well, What's you let's see that we can learn to weld underwater. This is this is Brandon. He's from uh, Texas, and he's a sailor. Yeah. You want to go sailing? Yes, I do. And I'm I don't know how to sail, so this will be useful. <laughs> Some knowledge. <laughs> No pro, no salty you don't dog. have you don't have three masted Chinese junk rig experience. No, you know what? I think you're okay. I don't think anybody in the planet I'd has say that. Not many of those people. Alan. You're doing yes, something. Sir. You don't know what you're doing to start with, but you've got a plan as you go. You noticed that, didn't you? I noticed that. Yeah. Well, we are we are the, we're proof that you can learn certain things. Right, right. My favorite book I'm reading right now is uh, uh, How to Fail at Almost Everything and Still Succeed. No, you're good at that. I, I could have written this book. Right. Yeah. You, you have taught me that it's okay to fail more than once, twice, three times, many as times. As long as you're learning something from it and you tweak it a little bit, then go on with the next experiment. Yes. You know, people call that experiment like Edison. How many light bulbs did he try before he got it right? Or his his peons actually right. did all the work. But anyway, yeah, he gets the credit for it. So. And somebody's going to be out there doing the same. <laughs> Thanks for coming today, Quentin. You're welcome. And uh, it's Brian. Brian? Yeah. Are you a sailor? Not a sailor. You look like a sailor. You know, I feel like one out on a day like today with a big boat over there. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Jaden is reading my favorite book. Show, show him the book. The big orange spot. The meaning of life is in this book. You would love this book. This book is you too. Okay, I will read that. Right. Have you haven't been on the boat yet? No, we're getting ready to go now. Okay, did you put your you put your email on the list yeah. for me? Got our email, cool. put the star, we're gonna help you get that thing moved. Sweet, thank you guys. Thank you, Doug. Yeah, we have been far. Okay, you ought to recognize what that is. Look at the shaft. Off a of brush hog? Yes. Oh. It's not a brush hog though, it's a post saw logger. Oh, okay. Okay. Yeah. okay. okay. They, they wanted a couple thousand dollars for the marine version to get that gearbox. Yeah. But the uh, trap store had it for $162, brand new. <laughs> So you got a shaft going down there. There's a shaft that goes okay. down, and then there's sprockets down there. It becomes chain and runs back to the rudder. Okay. So. How y'all doing? Good. Good. You? Yeah. Get up this time. Yeah. Just climbed up cool. with this. We got the new. Oh, look at you! You got a little one attached to the root back. That's my sweetheart. Yeah. Can we go on the bottom? Yeah, yeah sure you can. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I'm, I'm that one. So there, 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 off. there is a commonality <laughs> among people around uh, steel fabrication and boats, I guess. All right. Yeah. This is oh, three different guys. <laughs> you weld underwater? Yeah. You've done that for a career? Yeah. Or just uh, commercial work for oceanarian and ocean systems. Man, you got to come on the boat teach me how to do that. <laughs> or like a half that looks like yeah. fun. Well, I, I, I've got can't a break the bit. rules. You can't, I, I was trained in the Navy. But, uh, yeah, you were? You were Navy trained for back to work after that happened. I could always use an engineer. Some of them know what they're doing. There's just Absolutely. three other firefighters here. Oh, that's cool. Where were they from? Here. Oh, okay. They're retired. Tulsa. Yeah. Retired Tulsa. Yeah. 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 I'm not retired yet. I'm coming up on my 10 year no, anniversary. No, I can tell by the handshake you're not retired yet. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Oklahoma City. Oh, you're from Oklahoma City? Yeah. Okay. Tell us about Jesus died. Uh, I have a 1974 Coronado 23-2, which is the smallest boat Alan Payne ever designed, and it was in horrible shape. Uh, we didn't realize quite how bad a shape it was, how bad it was until we drug it home and found out there was three feet of water on there. Water, tons of mud daubers. We just actually just went to look at a sailboat at Grand Lake before we came here. There's a guy from Dallas up here looking at boats today. Yeah. 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 He went to Redbud. Don't go. They all sank. The ice got to the ones that were for sale. Oh, no. uh, yeah. Okay. That's bad. Might be a bargain. They don't have Brandon, pushboat pilot. David Yarborough, director of the Tulsa Port of Catoosa. Um, when, when you only have we'll see where we, AIS, right? Yeah, yeah, we'll see where we are. Yeah, yeah. He said that yeah, AIS, Brandon insisted we get one of those. And, we will. And I have, um, you know, from sailing, I have my handheld yeah. VHF. Well, and if we need a car to get in to get some groceries or that's parts, the that's the thing. Is uh, I'm, I'm not sure if I'll follow you all the way down to New Orleans, well, but uh, part of it'd be great. But uh, I definitely want to go all yeah. the way down to Kerr and uh, and get some pictures of the sail. Well, you can help us sail on Kerr. Well, that would, that's that's what I'd really like to do. That'd, that'd be, be fun. Yeah. 
Still oh, absolutely. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> That's just the... Uh, You're still here? I can't leave. <laughs> just can't leave. It's warm back here. You have found the one cabin that has a heater running in it. I'm finding so, all the interesting stuff. Power. I started watching it a few years ago. Why? And I don't know. It just came across my YouTube feed. And it stuck, huh? It did stick. Do you build stuff? No. Really? No, I love watching other people build stuff. <laughs> Do you sail? Not sail. We Bob, just got a boat. Oh, you have a boat. We, do, we yes. just got one. We're, we're getting it seaworthy. What do you have? It's a 26 foot uh, skiff craft from 1978. Is it one of those wooden. like wood? Oh, oh wood. those are the yes. pretty ones. That's yes. cool. <laughs> yeah. Or will be when we're done. When we're done. Yeah. yeah. 4,000 feet. It'll take a couple of days to get up there, but it'll get there. Oh, wow. I'm sorry, I'm incognito on you. Sorry. Yeah, I know. This is Bart we're here. Out. You're you're watching him do the sheets of metal, and you're like, you're just shaking your head, going, "That's crazy." I've had two guys here today that literally said to me, "I watched you put that first piece of steel together. I thought you're never gonna finish." <laughs> it's, it's, it's true. It's, it's crazy it's that you, you spent send... all the time to work on it and you finally... <laughs> yeah. Well, you can send, yeah, you can send his videos to friends and they can look and he has time stamps. So you look back seven years, whatever, and you can just progress. It's so it's so neat to be able to fast forward, to send it to people and then show them. And then... Yeah, you still got it. Hey, you need to polish it up a bit. I took that bird turn off. <laughs> Okay, I was thinking like what six and a half hours It has been like twice that this thing is really producing slowly or this tank is bigger than 55 gallons I don't think that's the case we're gonna have to wait a while but I have a TDS meter or total dissolved solids meter these things are actually just conductivity meters uh, and they kind of go on okay I can conduct electricity through the water this easily it must have this many parts of something dissolved in it so we'll see here Wow zero come on it can't be zero two there it is two yeah it's gonna stick with that it's only got an accuracy of about one or two parts per million anyway so yeah it's amazing okay it works it's just so slow <sighs> that should have it water flows a lot better than that concentrate adapters I made for this heat exchanger are leaking so I'm going to make a change to them in fact I'm going to get rid of them all together I think part of the problem is this uh, epoxy paint has too many brush strokes in it and it just seeps around the side of it this one's not actually leaking and sure enough it's smoother than the other one Gotta fix that. Okay, finally, no leaks. Okay, cleaned up the wire and the hose there, but eh, still gotta read the owner's manual though before I kick it on. Okay, heat exchanger's back in place. Okay, I've opened up the isolation valves. Level on the skate went down like it should because it uh, all the fluid went forward and filled up the engine and the pipes up, up there, and I'm just gonna top it back off. Well, keep an ear on that while it fills up. But the way this works is there's a fin out behind the boat here in front of the propeller. That's called a skeg. And it's got 100 gallons of capacity in it. And we put all of our engine coolant in that. So when the coolant needs to be cooled, it cools itself to the ocean beside us. It also has enough capacity at 100 gallons that we can be dried out because it's a twin uh, keeled boat. We can set it on a on a mud flat somewhere let the tide go out we could still fire up engines and do things because our capacity of 100 gallons gives us a lot of cooling you got to warm all that up before your engine's been overheat so we could probably run you know depending on outside ambient temperature the air temperature we could probably run the engine for 20 minutes before it does anything to bring that temperature up really so there's a lot of stuff in the way but basically that's the pipe that the uh, hot water goes back to from all the engines and you can see it running there the other end is down here. Oops, it's gonna fill up. Oh, I ran out of water. I guess I need a little bit more than 110 gallons. It's gotta be really close. Here in the engine room, you can see those two pipes really clearly. 
you know, one taking uh, hot water to the skeg and the other one bringing cold water back from it. So when we need something cooled like our oil cooler down here for the transmission that we just finished doing the welds on, that gets its cold water right out of the bottom pipe. That line goes down to this end of the oil cooler, passes through, comes out the other end, goes back around, hits the pump, and then out the pump and back into the hot water out. The engine could be moving hot water through here. Uh, the intercooler could be moving hot water through here. Everything dumps this hot water back into this line and onto the rear. They're not hooked up yet, but the oil from the transmission goes into one end of the oil cooler and out the other, and that's how the transmission gets cool. And as soon as we kick on the engine, that electric pump will start cooling the oil in the transmission to make sure it stays as cool as possible. That's the recommendation of the transmission guys. And the reason why that's important is because we're running an automatic bus transmission as a boat transmission. It's not intended to do that, but I think it's gonna work just fine. We just keep the thing at first gear all the time. Now, sometimes we flip it back to neutral and then reverse, but you know, you'd hardly ever back up a boat. So keeping the oil cool means that the torque converter stays tighter or locked in, less slippage. You know and how cool it is? I don't know. We're going to have to get out there on the water, run all this stuff, and we'll put thermometers on it and see what it does. And on the Facebook group, there was a discussion that was entirely too long for me to read uh, about cooling the engine with cold water. But I don't really think that's an issue. See, when these two lines come up here in front of the engine, that's the cold and it gets sucked in just like it's coming back from a radiator. So it's always going to be cold water coming into here because we have no radiator. It's always this cold feed of, of fluid. But the thermostat on the engine is still right there and that decides how much hot water is released from the engine and you only get cold water coming in when hot water is actually released. When that thermostat's closed, all that water just keeps circulating around in the engine, so I don't think it's going to be a big deal. When this does open up, it's always going to be cold water coming in, but it's going to reach up here pretty quickly and shut this back down. So the, uh, the, the downside is, oh, well, you're always going to have that cold water coming into the bottom of the engine. I don't think that's going to be a big deal. So the argument would be, well, put a line connecting the hot to the cold for the thermostat in that and mix hot water back into the cold water entering the engine and it takes care of all that. The problem is so many people go out there and they fix shit that's not necessarily an issue. And you're throwing in so many parts and money and time into this possibility of a problem that you might foresee and you really don't know what you're talking about. So eh, don't waste your money on that. You'll never get a boat like this built. Because there's all kinds of things you can throw money at. Like I'm using an automatic school bus transmission. That thing cost me nothing. It came with the engine. It's just part of the, part of the deal. And if I had to replace it, they cost about $600. It's an Allison 454. So, and sure, if you had a lot of money and no patience for fixing or testing things, then buy yourself the $14,000 twin disc transmission, okay? It's just an excuse for not doing anything. You have enough money. If you don't, people give it to you for working hard. Go work hard for somebody and you can make more money. But not living your dream and your purpose and making an excuse of, I don't have enough money, that is the biggest cop out in the world. Don't use it. So that's where it's easy to fill, but there's a hose that runs on up the wall to another tank up there. That's our head pressure. And we'll always want a little fluid in that tank because we always want the hose to have some fluid in it. That provides pressure. You get about a half PSI for every foot of elevation. So that's about six feet above the engine, so three PSI. Normally an engine would have a radiator and the radiator would have a radiator cap and that radiator cap has a spring in it that pushes pressure down to keep the fluid under pressure. We we don't have a radiator cap and we don't want one and there's a reason for it. We have a skeg that has a lot of flat surface on it and flat surface doesn't take pressure very well. So 3 PSI is no problem for that. I've tested it up to I think it was 9 or 10 PSI. But big flat surfaces, just do the math. You count up how many square inches there are, how many PSI, you multiply those two together. You get a lot of force real quick when you have something that's 9 feet long and 4 feet tall even if it's a triangle with welded on on frames it's a lot of pressure so you don't want to blow your boat apart because you have 15 psi in the coolant system so we're going with three what's that mean if the coolant gets too hot it boils 
easier. It's like being on the top of a mountain. Your water's boiling, but your oatmeal is cold as ice, seems like, right? So lower pressure means the water is going to boil at a lower temperature. And you don't want water boiling inside your engine because that's going to create a hot spot. It's going to have air in there and then it messes up with the circulation. And it's going to overheat a portion at least of your engine below the head, that sort of thing. You don't want that. But it's not going to happen. At least I don't think the chances of it happening are high because we have 100 gallons of coolant in the skeg we're always providing cool coolant to the engine there's no reason why the temperature should get into the higher range and we've got the whole ocean to dump that heat to through the skeg but that is not like driving a school bus across a desert you've got a lot of heat in that radiator and you're trying to get that heat to move into air that's blowing over that radiator that is not an efficient thing to try and do so radiators are big in order to achieve that we have a huge skeg and the transfer of heat from liquid to another liquid even through a quarter inch piece of steel is very efficient compared to heat going from water to air liquid to liquid very good transfer rate so means that what heat we do get back in this keg it gets passed off to the ocean relatively easily Top it off a little distilled water I got left over from other projects. And we'll keep an eye on it. All right, that's the last of the freeze damage repairs. Life is a banquet, and most poor suckers are starving to death. Okay, well, somebody on Facebook gave me the idea of looking at airplane jacks. And so that's what I'm going to build is an airplane jack. Now I gotta unbolt this thing so I can get my hydraulic cylinder back out of it. So I'm making these plates to bolt together. I'm just gonna make sure that they can do this high angle without interfering with each other's welds. Just need to mark which leg goes where and which side the tab goes on. Okay, one down, one to go. Okay, now there are two of them, and next thing to do is uh, figure out the hydraulics for this. It shouldn't be that hard, and then see if it actually lifts the boat. We'll do that in the next video. So, till then, what you make today?
loved ones.